I'm gonna share five tips with you that could improve your watercolor paintings today. Find your correct perspective. I wanna show you an easy way to find that correct perspective line in your painting to ensure that your painting looks accurate. Here is a recent painting that I was working on and you see I had this driveway here kind of in the foreground and I like the directional lines that you can see here in the reference photo. Each one of these lines has to go towards the right perspective. And if that was off, this area of the painting was not gonna work. All I have to do is trace the perspective line of one and see where it goes, and that will tell me where all the rest of them need to go. So let me show you what I mean by this. So when I painted this one, I realized that it's pointing about to this car right here. And so after you paint one, keep this side of your brush still pivot over to where the next line is and come back and paint that line. Once you get the perspective right on this one, you can just pivot and all of these lines will read correctly. Find the right perspective on your first one and that'll unlock how to paint the rest of them. And this works well for directional lines on the roads, um, when you're painting buildings and houses, find the perspective line on one of them and then make sure that you're tracing back to the right perspective line for all the rest of them. And if you can think through that sense of perspective and simplify it in that way, it's gonna ensure that these little details in your painting are correct and really help you take that next step forward. Tip number two, rough up your brush when you're painting trees. You can use the tip of your brush, you can use the side of your brush, which is good. But one thing I want you to consider doing is you can rough up your brush a little bit. When I say that, I mean like, push down on your brush to make the edge of it look a little more splayed out. And then you can push down on the paper and look at this nice, organic, interesting shape that you can create when you use your brush that way. And play with these wonderful shapes that you can create. You can also push down, if you use some paper that gets a little bit of texture on it, you can push down and create all kinds of wonderful dry brush and, and interesting marks by being willing to rough up your brush a little bit. This is a good way to create a mark that looks very natural and organic and to do it quickly too. So we're not laboring over every little shape along the way, but we're using the brush and the texture of the paper to create a really organic effortless shape. Tip number three, practice your mark. Now we all know that in watercolor, there aren't a lot of ways to correct mistakes. So a good way to ensure that you're creating the mark that you wanna make is to use a little piece of scrap paper on the side and practice that mark. Make sure you have the right consistency on your brush and that you know exactly what you're gonna do before you put your brush to your paper. Grab your little piece of scrap paper. A lot of times we have one try to get this right and so if we know what that mark is gonna look like before we make it, we have a much better chance of being successful. Tip number four, mix more paint than you're going to need. Often, if you're painting a large shape in your scene, you're gonna run out of paint. It's something that happens very often. You run out of paint in the middle of a wash and then you have to go back and mix up more. So think about this, be proactive here and mix up more paint because inevitably, it's probably still not gonna be enough. The last thing you wanna do when you're trying to create a beautiful, fluid, connected shape is to have to stop and mix and remix and try to get that same color over again once you run out of paint. So be proactive here. Think ahead. Mix more paint than you think that you're gonna need. And tip number five is an important one that I have to keep reminding myself. It's becoming more and more natural the longer that I've been painting, but step back from your painting often. When we're working on a painting, we're just right on top of it, really close to it. And we're focusing on the little things when we need to focus on the big things. And one of the best ways to do that is to remind yourself to take a step back and look at your painting. You wanna know, how this new part of your painting, how the current area that you're working on is gonna fit into the bigger picture of things. A great way to keep thinking about the values of the different areas of your painting, the edges, and how your painting is gonna look as a whole is to take a step back often and assess things. Something helpful might be to put a little reminder close to your easel to remind yourself to take a step back. 
If you're ready to take a big step forward in your painting, I have a free video lesson just for you. The seven secrets of fresh and powerful painting. Now in this video lesson, I talk about how to plan your painting, how to mindfully paint your scene, and most importantly, how to put down your brush before you overwork your painting. Because overworking is one of the biggest issues in watercolor. We think the more that we add, the better that our painting is gonna be, and often that is not the case. So once you sign up for this video lesson, I send you two things. I send you a pre-painting checklist, and you can use this checklist before every one of your paintings to make sure that you're thinking through these things before you get started. In addition to that, I send you my watercolor supplies guide. So if you have questions about paper, paints, or pigment, or anything like that, you can take a look at my watercolor supplies guide. Now it's simple if you wanna get started with this video lesson, all you have to do is follow this link to get moving forward. I'll see you there.